Clarissa. Eat that meat, Jennifer. Why doesn't that feather look pleasant? Fasten your taste bud for gastronomic rice. Cause us two fat ladies are itching up to get into your kitchen. Yeah! Oh, yes. Look, Jennifer, there's Mevagissi. It's charming. I do love this part of Cornwall. The restaurant's in a perfect position, on the quay, practically in the water. Well, we'll make some glorious fish dishes with the sea right on our doorstep. Here we are, the shark's fin. The shark's fin. What a lovely name. Well, there are lots of sharks around here, apparently. Not such a lovely thing. No. Don't like them at all. Yuck. They're quite good eating, though. They're excellent. They look rather like swordfish or something like that. But they don't, I think they're very, very evil fish. Do you know, when I was in Singapore, there was a man who had a shark and sort of got its teeth around the top of his head all the way round. Charming. And he used to wear a hat, and he'd charge you ten Singapore dollars, and he'd take his hat off, and you'd see these tooth marks all the way around the top of his head. What? Right, now let's just dump our stuff and get out and get some good raw material. Now, this is a nice little harbour. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. Lots of fish, I hope. Dear old bite, done us well. Lovely creature. Keep well. With all these pretty boats, it's so nice, isn't it? But that guy in the blue smock looks proper. So they know about their nets, don't they? Like weaving gossamer, isn't it? Good afternoon. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. We're standing in and doing some cooking for John and Audrey at the Shark's Fin, and we wanted to buy some fish. Oh, we've sold out to the market. Hold them. The chap over there, Andrew, in the blue boat there, he's probably helped you out with some fresh fish. He's only just arrived in. So. Okay, okay, good. Great. Ahoy the boat! Are you Andrew? Yes, that's right. Oh, hail. Those men up there tell us you've just got a fresh catch. Yes, that's right. I've got ling, pollock, cod, coley, some uh, John Dory and a red mullet. Oh, lovely John Dory. Some Peter's fish. With the thumb marks there. They're absolutely delicious, aren't they? The thumb yes, very nice. Peter. Thumb prints of St. Peter. But is it, I don't think... Every, every many of them... Um, two or three, that's all. No, I don't think... I, I think I'd, I'd like a coley, please, to make yeah, a certainly. pie. Sure. What about that one? Splendid, fellow. Like a bloody great mermaid, isn't it? There you go. Stay still. <laughs> that's wonderful. That'll feed a lot, won't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Very popular in Shetland, though. They split them and smoke them on a peat fire. And then they hang them up in the rafters, and the phosphorescence is so bright you can read by them. What a wonderful thing to have in case of a power cut. <laughs> <laughs> right, you all right with that? Yeah, so what do you want? Oh, I want some monkfish. Have you got any monkfish? No, I'm afraid not. Oh. Um, if you see the yellow boat over there, yeah, uh -huh. um, that's a monk netter. Oh, right, that OK. That might be able to help you out. It's a what? A monk netter? Yes. Let's go to a monk netter. <laughs> I love, I love seeing sort of an expert at it. I know. <laughs> Ugh, look at that. Wonderful. Devil fish. It really is a monster, isn't it? What? One lovely fresh monk pile. Isn't that lovely? Right. Mine is in the bucket. That's it's, great. It's for the shark's right. fin. Yeah. OK. OK, thanks a lot. Thanks, See you not again. a problem. Bye. Thank you. Bye. A bit better than your supermarket fish, that. Supermarket? You wouldn't find this in a supermarket. Isn't it beautifully fresh? Yes. Not a smell on it. Now, everybody loves a fish pie, don't they? I, mean, I don't know anybody who doesn't. But I want to use coley, because no one uses coley, and it's a very fine fish indeed. Some people think it's only for cats, but it's not. It's a wonderful, flaky fish. Ask any fisherman. They're very proud of it. So I'm using coley 
mixed with smoked haddock because that gives a good flavour. And I like at the bottom of the dish, I've already prepared it, some cooked buttered spinach. It's a nice surprise to find at the bottom and it goes very well. But first, to mix them all together, I must go and make a bechamel. What I'm going to cook is a monkfish tail, a gigot of monkfish. A gigot is the French for a leg of lamb, or indeed the Scots, they call it a jigot. And you can see the shape of it is, is rather like the shape of a leg of lamb. And I'm going to lard it with anchovies. You'll probably know about larding because it's normally something you do with game or other very dry meats to, to put moistness through them. And this is my larding needle. Look at my nice larding needle. It's a wonderful weapon. I know. Stick it in the burglar. And if you haven't got one, then you just use a, a sharp knife with a point on it. And so you just make a hole, you see? Make a hole in. And then... Then you tuck your anchovy in and just keep pushing it in patiently. It's all very well to have fast food and, and you need it in this day and age, but now and again it's, it's nice to do things sort of slowly and gradually. Very good for the, the busy businessman to come home and make a, a, a serious meal. It will calm them down no end. In fact, I do know some who do. They come home and they settle down and cook a proper dinner. And they find it relaxing, you know, after those ghastly things they do in the city with stocks and shares and destroying each other's reputations. <laughs> and now I've larded my monkfish, I'm going to put rosemary round it. It's a lovely combination, rosemary and uh, monkfish, very unusual. You tuck it all underneath. Lots of it, lots and lots of rosemary. Very good with fish, rosemary. And this monkfish tail has already been marinated in um, lemon juice and olive oil, just to moisten it, because it's quite a dry fish. Very Italian. Very well. Yeah, and um, Welsh had the Italian. Yes, well, I dare say they probably... Well, no, they probably didn't get it from each other. And then I'm just going to pour a little more oil over it, and a little more oil over the rosemary, because it's the, the essential oils of the rosemary that needs to be brought out do it in contact with oil or fat, and there's no indigenous fat in the monkfish. I love that smell that mm. rosemary produces. So do I. Very good with pike. And there we are, all ready to bung in the oven. Beautiful. See you in a tick. I'll assemble my pie. Very good. I want to put my fish in to my bechamel. There goes the haddock. There goes my lovely flakes of coli, which has been slightly poached. And I'm going to put in a good slurp of lovely anchovy essence, which is one of my most favourite old-fashioned essences and brings out the flavour of treat in any, any fish pie or anything like that. You can see we're rather fond of anchovy. It's a very good thing because it, the, the taste of anchovy sort of disappears. It just produces a fine flavour. Stir that in. There, that, that's a lovely mixture. And we'll put it all on. There we go. Smooth it over. Now, prawns. Prawns for treats. Try and put these in sort of evenly so everybody gets a fair share. Just over the top. Now we must put the potato on the top. Now, this will be enough for a regiment. You can feed a good hungry family. Or just friends. Why not friends? And uh, now then, we make it into a herringbone shape. Some go that way. Some go that way. Like, like that good tweed made of cold herringbone. Ready for the oven. And that's about it. Very good. 
and I'm going to make a hot tomato vinaigrette to go over the monkfish. In here I've got just more than twice as much oil as I've got vinegar. Some salt, some pepper, and just heat it through. It's very good either with fish or with poultry, a hot vinaigrette. And then I'm going to put the tomatoes in. And stir it. You don't want the tomatoes to fall apart. They're quite finely chopped. You just want to heat them through. Look what they found! Oh, well done, dear. Just in well, time. That's wonderful. All I have to do is pour it over the top. Splatter, splatter. Looks like jewels spread across it. Well, that's right. Look at that. Mwah. Before John and Audrey went away, they said we could get crabs and lobsters from someone called Lawrence. He's a fisherman with a green boat who's usually around here. Oh, that'd be great. But I want, I want to get scallops. Scallops. They don't have no. scallops here, but they've they got them at Foy. They dive for them at Foy. That's not very far. No, so we can have them sent over. That's not a problem. And there's lots of mussels on the beaches around here. Yeah, that'd be nice. We could go and, yeah. go and gather some. Gather some. Gather us mussels while we may. Indeed. I wonder if that's him there. The kneeling man. That's right. Hello, are you Lawrence? Are you Lawrence? Yes. Okay. Clarissa and Jennifer, um, John and Audrey said, um, from the shark's fin, said that we could get crabs and lobsters from you. Is that right? Not in the moment, no, but I'm going to see in about two hours' time. Can we come with you? Can, if you like. Yeah, yeah I'd love to. love to see you. The last time I was down here, um, there was a beach, not very far, with had lots of mussels on it, which yeah. we went and picked. Where yeah. would that be, do you know? Gar Garland, Hammock. Hammock, that's it. Oh, they're about three miles. Right. We could do that and then return to you. Yeah, that's okay. Two okay. okay. hours' time by the lighthouse. Lovely. Lovely. See you later. Right, okay. cheers. Thanks a lot. Yeah, all the best. <laughs> what a sweet fellow. Isn't he nice? Yeah. yeah. It looks murky and wet out there. Do you think we should put our wellies on? I certainly do. We'll get soaked otherwise. Poor wet feet. Look, lots. We got snails as well. Winkles, periwinkles. Periwinkles. Are they pretty, these blue? Aren't they? Aren't the rocks lovely too? They're probably a bit small to serve in the restaurant, don't you think? Yes, too small. They'd be too much trouble. But they'd be delicious. We can eat them. Yep. We can go and have a cook up for us. Okay. Yeah, everybody's used to those sort of big, horrid ones. Huh? Yeah, they're, they're all terrible ones that are farmed. Which which are really disgusting. Great white flesh. Oh, you mean the green-lipped ones, or whatever they're called? I don't know. Green-lipped is a terrible thing to say, isn't it? I'm so cold, I can hardly get these off. I think I've probably got enough now, if it's just going to be for us. So shall I go back and start getting the, the fire started and cooking up and things? Yes, I'll try and get a few more. OK, right, well, I'll see you back up there. OK. You've been picking them in your helmet. Yes, it's a great mistake. It'll stink. <laughs> <laughs> they need washing. No, I rinse them in in the rock pool. Oh, good. Well done. What you got there? Not many. Oh well, no, we got enough. It's only for us, after all. Marinier and how? What have you put in already? Uh, well, I melted the butter and I softened the shallot, and then I just put some parsley and some wine in and brought it up. So now we wait. Perhaps I ought to put my helmet on the top of the saucepan. Oh, what a brilliant yeah. idea. Yeah, that's very good. Didn't know what it'll do to the helmet. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all, all in a good cause, Jennifer. Yes, all in a good cause. Wow. They must be crazy. Extraordinary. They're very tasty, aren't they? Yes, yeah, they're small but delicious. Oh, look, here's one that's broken. Sweet. I'll sling that. And be so careful, don't you? You must be, yes, otherwise it's colour or all rub. Right, well, you finish those up and I'll start packing up. Otherwise we'll be late for Lawrence. To the lighthouse! I hope the weather clears up for the trip.
Right. Well, we're up. Watch the exhaust pipe, it might be hot. Yeah. No, we're a delicious fisherman. Hey, Lawrence! There, there you are. are. Greg, morning, yeah. ladies, how are you? Fine, how are you? Dead on time, aren't yeah. we? How are you, Trevor? All right. Life jackets, ugh. Then the government. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Lovely, thanks very much. Lease up my corsets, Trevor. Well, he's like a walking duvet. <laughs> I feel like a Dalek. Dum, dum, dum. I hate to tell you, dear, but you look like one and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fall into the arms of Lawrence. Poor Lawrence. <laughs> it goes away. In. Whoops, it is. All aboard. That lovely smelly fish. Bait, crab bait. Here we go. Give us a sea shanty, Jennifer. Oh, hey, little fish, you don't cry, don't cry. Your hey, little fish, you don't cry, don't cry. That was the song Spencer Tracy sang in Captain's Courageous. I'm having the pleasure of cooking scallops with leeks and flavoured with uh, some white wine and vermouth. Clarissa's going to do something quite different. <laughs> I'm going to do crab for my seafood dish. Crab, corn and coriander fritters. I'm going to clean this crab. I'm going to take the claws off. This is a whole crab which has just been boiled. And everybody thinks that there are large chunks of the crab that are poisonous and that you can't eat, which is a complete fallacy. The only bit, as you will see when I open it, that you can't eat are the dead men's fingers, which you wouldn't want to eat anyway. These horrible bits that look like used latex or I don't know quite what. And you really wouldn't want to eat those. I mean, there'd be no temptation at all. So I'm going to get all the meat fiddled out of this bit. There's a lot of meat in here. It's a very good job to give to your ten-year-old children. I remember when we were children all sitting around with skewers fiddling out the bits of crab. It was great fun. But anyway, whatever, it's going to take me a bit of time because I haven't got any ten-year-old children. So, Jennifer, do you want to get on with yours for the moment? Yes, well, I've got my leeks are practically ready because I thought I'd get them out of the way. Simmer them with just eight spoonfuls of, of water until they become sort of almost like pale green spaghetti. And we'll keep them aside and we'll get on with the scallops. When you first buy them, this is what they'll look like, which may frighten you. But if you ask your kind fishmonger, he'll remove all that for you. But he probably won't do it all, and you'll end up with this charming little fellow, and he'll have this little bit of black here, which is a bit of intestine, I think, really. Uh, it doesn't do anybody any harm, but we'll remove that. And a pair of scissors is quite an easy thing. Useful, you know, you can just snip it. Off. And that peel it away, you see, like that. An ounce of butter in there. And we have some nice little chopped shallots. These have got to melt, get soft, because you don't want them uh, sort of feeling al dente in the sauce. But it shouldn't, it doesn't take long, it doesn't take very long. There we are, now we'll add. Half a glass of wine, white wine. Whoosh. And some vermouth, dry white vermouth, which gives a very good flavour. And I like having vermouth around. 
because I'm not tempted to drink it, but it's very good for cooking. Now we'll put the uh, scallops in. Separate the coral from the white bit. There's a beautiful one. That's a wonderful colour. Oh, that. isn't that glorious? Yes. You now come to a simmer. They take about two minutes. Don't overcook them. It's better they're, they're better raw than overcooked. So then when they're done, they're going to press the juice out from the leeks and put that in the bottom of the pan. And then we get the scallops and we take them out and we put them all on top. Look how beautiful they are, Oops, with that yeah. pale, pale green and the coral. Lovely. Now we can have our fun, yeah. making the sauce. Always fun. Get this hot again. And we want the juices from the leeks as well into there. We want to reduce this so you can bubble away like mad. Now I've got a lovely bowl of Cornish cream, and we'll add that. This is nice and rich. I like rich food. Mm. None of this nonsense about yogurt instead of cream. Yogurt is not instead of cream. Yogurt is very good for your breakfast, or if, if you have a poor tummy, or if you're a vegetarian or something. Um, but for cream, there is nothing better than cream. Nothing better than cream. It's unctuous, it's rich, and it, it collects everything together. And you can't beat it. That's all bubbled mm. and a bit thick. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Now we just pour it all over our dish. Look at Isn't that. that pretty? Isn't that very pretty? And just to finish it off, we'll, we'll put some pasty. There, she, she's beautiful, she's beautiful. Oh. Fit for a king! It does look wonderful. I'll just take it through and I'll come back and get rid of my mess. Right, well, I'm just going to finish stripping off the corn. This is the last of the six ears of corn. And you just cut down the ear. All you need is a sharp knife. It's really very simple. You may think that it's easier to use a tin or, or frozen corn, which, of course, you can if you haven't got the real thing. But actually, I think the real thing is a lot sweeter and nicer. I've already stripped the other ones and put them with the brown and the white crab meat into this bowl. Boil that in. And now I'm going to add to it some crushed garlic, a couple of cloves of crushed garlic, some onion, some fresh coriander, lovely green fresh coriander, and I'm also going to use some ground coriander, which is not the same thing, because in fact ground coriander is coriander seeds ground up. And it if you use the both, you just get more of a flavour of coriander through it. And some salt and pepper to season. And then three eggs, which I'm just going to break into this bowl and lightly whisk together. And I'll pour that in. And now I'm going to mix in some flour, not all at once, but in three bits. So you mix it through thoroughly each time. And use your hands. I mean, I, I think I had a deprived childhood. I, I wasn't allowed to make mud patties or something. And so now this mixture needs to rest in the fridge and chill for half a day. I mean, you can, obviously, if you're in a hurry, leave it for less. But the longer it stays there, the better it coheres and the easier it is for frying. And then, when it is cold, you just want to mix it around together one more time, in case it's separated out a bit. 
and now I'm ready to fry it. Oh, I'm the kitchen fairy. Just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> all done, all done. A waft. A the waft, real kitchen waft. fairy. I'm longing to see this. Mmm. Well, I've got some oil here, which I'm going to put into the pan. Just ordinary cooking oil, you know, sort of ground nice up. Nice old pan. Oil. Yeah, the, I love these old pans. The heavier, the better, really, these pans. You want to get it nice and hot. Right, so you make a two-inch sort of pate of it. Squish it all together, isn't it? Mud yeah. pies again. You drop a bit of corn in to see if it's hot, you see, and it sizzles up like that. And you just drop it into the pan and leave it to fry. What you mustn't do is, is turn it over too quickly. You must no. let it cook underneath. They're like little, little rock cakes. I know, isn't it? Yeah, that. That meanders them. That's not for you to wipe your hands on. Is it not? No. What is it for? <laughs> That's my oven cloth. <laughs> well, I'm really sorry Dirty. about that. I made a right old mess of it Dirty. now. Dirty. <laughs> It's supposed to be proof that you love somebody if you're prepared to stand over a hot stove for hours frying up little cakes for them. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, get on with it. Yes, Jennifer. Right. Yeah, and you just keep going till they're done, really. Yeah. Right? And pop them in the oven to keep warm. Pop them in the oven to keep warm, absolutely. These crab cakes are delicious as a starter with a salsa or a squeeze of lime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Serve a good, robust red wine with this fish pie, not white. This monkfish makes a wonderful dinner party dish served with spinach and a gratin of potatoes. A good crust of bread is all you need with these scallops. Oh, what a long day. Oh, I'd forgotten how exhausting running a restaurant is. It's a feat, it's a feat, it's that standing all the time. I think my feet were bound as a child, they've never recovered. <laughs> <laughs> I put the papers on. So wise, don't Yeah, so wise. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, I think it was a great success. So, there we are, dear. Here's your beautiful eyes. Oh, and yours, dear. Yeah, and yours, boy. Jin Jin. <laughs> the white bit. There's a beautiful one. That's a wonderful colour. Oh, that. isn't that glorious? Yes. You now come to a simmer. They take about two minutes. Don't overcook them. It's better they're, they're better raw than overcooked. So then when they're done, they're going to press the juice out from the leeks and put that in the bottom of the pan and then we get the scallops and we take them out and we put them all on top. Look how beautiful they are Oops, with that yeah. pale pale green and the coral. Lovely. Now we can have our fun Ta making the sauce. Always fun. Get this hot again and we want the juices 
from the leaks as well. Into there. We want to reduce this so you can bubble away like mad. Now I've got a lovely bowl of Cornish cream, and we'll add that. This is nice and rich. I like rich food. Mm. None of this nonsense about yogurt instead of cream. Yogurt is not instead of cream. There we are, all ready to bung in the oven. Beautiful. See you in a tick. I'll assemble my pie. Very good. I want to put my fish in to my bechamel. There goes the haddock. There goes my lovely flakes of coli, which have been slightly poached. And I'm going to put in a good slurp of lovely anchovy essence, which is one of my most favourite old-fashioned essences, and brings out the flavour of treat in any, any fish pie or anything like that. You can see we're rather fond of anchovy. It's a very good thing because it, the, the taste of anchovy sort of disappears. It just produces a fine flavour. Stir that in. There, that, that's a lovely mixture. And we'll put it all on. There we go. Smooth it over. Now. And they find it relaxing, you know, after those ghastly things they do in the city with stocks and shares and destroying each other's reputations. <laughs> and now I've larded my monkfish, I'm going to put rosemary around it. It's a lovely combination, rosemary and uh, monkfish. Very unusual. You tuck it all underneath. Lots of it, lots and lots of rosemary. Very good with fish rosemary. And this monkfish tail has already been marinated in um, lemon juice and olive oil, just to moisten it, because it's quite a dry fish. Very Italian. Very well. Yeah, well said the Italian. Yes, well, I dare say they probably... Well, no, they probably didn't get it from each other. And then I'm just going to pour a little more oil over it, and a little more oil over the rosemary, because it's the, the essential oils of the rosemary that needs to be brought out. Do it in contact with oil or fat, and there's no indigenous fat in the monkfish. I love that smell that mm. rosemary produces. So do I. Very good with pike. And there we are, all ready to bung in the oven. Beautiful. See you in a tick. I'll assemble my pie. Very good. I want to put my fish in to my bechamel. Nice to do things sort of slowly and gradually. Very good for the, the busy businessman to come home and make a, a, a serious meal. It will calm them down no end. In fact, I do know some who do. They come home and they settle down and cook a proper dinner. And they find it relaxing, you know, after those ghastly things they do in the city with stocks and shares and destroying each other's reputations. <laughs> And now I've larded my monkfish, I'm going to put rosemary around it. It's a lovely combination, rosemary and uh, monkfish, very unusual. You tuck it all underneath. Lots of it, lots and lots of rosemary. Very good with fish rosemary. And this monkfish tail has already been marinated in um, lemon juice and olive oil, just to moisten it, because it's quite a dry fish. Very Italian. Very well. Yeah, um, well said the tenant. Yes, well, I dare say they probably... Well, no, they probably didn't get it from each other. And then I'm just going to pour a little more oil over it, and a little more oil over the rosemary, because it's the, the essential oils of the rosemary that needs to be brought out. Do it in contact with oil or fat, and there's no indigenous fat in the monkfish. I love that smell that mm. rosemary produces. So do I. Very good with pike. And... There we are, all ready to bung in the oven. Beautiful. See you in a tick. I'll assemble my pie. A little more oil over it, 
and a little more oil over the rosemary because it's the, the essential oils of the rosemary that needs to be brought out do it in contact with oil or fat and there's no indigenous fat in the monkfish. I love that smell that mm. rosemary produces. So do I. Very good with pike. And there we are, all ready to bung in the oven. Beautiful. See you in a tick. I'll assemble my pie. Very good. I want to put my fish in to my bechamel. There goes the haddock. There goes my lovely flakes of coli, which has been slightly poached. And I'm going to put in a good slurp of lovely anchovy essence, which is one of my most favourite old-fashioned essences, and brings out the flavour of treat in any, any fish pie or anything like that. You can see we're rather fond of anchovy. It's a very good thing because it, the, the taste of anchovy sort of disappears. It just produces a fine flavour. Stir that in. There, that, that's a lovely mixture. Uh, OK, Clarissa and Jennifer, um, John and Audrey said, um, from the shark's fin, said that we could get crabs and lobsters from you. Is that right? Not in the moment, no, but I'm going to see in about two hours' time. Can we come with you? Can, if you like. Yeah, yeah I'd love to. Love to see you. The last time I was down here, um, there was a beach, not very far, with had lots of mussels on it, which yeah. we went and picked. Where yeah. would that be, do you know? Gar Garleyden, Hammock. Hammock, that's it. Oh, they're about three miles. Right. We could do that and then return to you. Yeah, it's OK. Mm -hmm. okay. Two okay. hours' time by the lighthouse. Lovely. Lovely. See you later. Right, okay. here. Thanks a lot. Yeah, all the best. <laughs> what a sweet fellow. Isn't he nice? Yeah. yeah. It looks murky and wet out there. Do you think we should put our wellies on? I certainly do. We'll get soaked otherwise. Poor wet feet. Look, lots. We've got snails as well. Winkles, periwinkles. Periwinkles. Are they pretty, these blue? Aren't they? Aren't the rocks lovely too? They're probably a bit small to serve in the restaurant, don't you think? Yes, too small. They'd be too much trouble. But they'd be delicious. We can eat them. Yep. We can uh, go and have a cook-up for us. Yeah, everybody's used to those sort of big, horrid ones. Huh? Yeah, they're, they're all terrible ones that are, are farmed, which, which are really disgusting. Great white flesh. Oh, you mean the green-lipped ones, or whatever they're called? In the rafters, and the phosphorescence is so bright you can read by them. What a wonderful thing to have in case of a power cut. <laughs> <laughs> right, you all right with that? Yeah, so what do you want? Oh, I want some monkfish. Have you got any monkfish? No, I'm afraid not. Oh. Um, if you see the yellow boat over there, yeah, uh -huh. um, that's a monk netter. Oh, right, that OK. That might be able to help you out. It's a what? A monk netter? Yes. Let's go to a monk knitter. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love seeing sort of an expert at it. I know. <laughs> Ugh, look at that. Wonderful. Devil fish. It really is a monster, isn't it? What? One lovely fresh monk pile. Isn't that lovely? Right. Mine is in the bucket. That's it's great. It's for the shark's right. fin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, See you not again. a problem. Bye. Thank you. Bye. It's a bit better than your supermarket fish, that. Supermarket? You wouldn't find this in a supermarket. Isn't it beautifully fresh? Yes. Not a smell on it. Now, everybody loves a fish pie, don't they? I mean, I don't know anybody who doesn't. But I want to use coli, because no one uses coli, and it's a very fine fish indeed. Some people think it's only for cats, but it's not. It's a wonderful, flaky fish. Ask any fishermen, they're very proud of it. So I'm using coli. Stop bowling soon. 
Up <laughs> comes your mother. Captain Arthur, sleeping down below. I'm having the pleasure of cooking scallops with leeks and flavoured with uh, some white wine and vermouth. Clarissa's going to do something quite different. <laughs> I'm going to do crab for my seafood dish. Crab, corn and coriander fritters. I'm going to clean this crab. To take the claws off. This is a whole crab which has just been boiled. And everybody thinks that there are large chunks of the crab that are poisonous and that you can't eat, which is a complete fallacy. The only bit, as you will see when I open it, that you can't eat are the dead men's fingers, which you wouldn't want to eat anyway. These horrible bits that look like used latex or I don't know quite what. And you really wouldn't want to eat those. I mean, there'd be no temptation at all. So I'm going to get all the meat fiddled out of this bit. There's a lot of meat in here. It's a very good job to give to your ten-year-old children. I remember when we were children all sitting around with skewers fiddling out.